Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest is known for his work with the pen and a pad. He's the senior columnist for the Shadow League, where he tackles sports, race, and politics. Mm. Please welcome Karen Phillips to the circle. Yay! Good, Good, to, Good to have you here, sir. It's yes. a pleasure. It's definitely a pleasure. Uh, we're definitely going to jump right in. Mm. Uh, you had a very moving piece about the passing of Kobe Bryant mm. and the impact that it had on the players that day. Mm -hmm. And in your piece, you talked about how the NBA should have uh, canceled all the games that day. Let's talk about your thoughts on that, if you can t uh, explain that to our viewers, and Kobe Bryant's impact as well. Oh. Uh, like, I get all the logistics that come with trying to, like, cancel a slate of games. I think there were only, like, six of eight that day. Uh, but when you think about all the things that the NBA has done over the last year or two, um, a couple of months ago, uh, closing out 2019, they came out with this new initiative and these guidelines on how they were going to really um, tackle mental health because this is the league where, you know, faces, prominent faces have, have come out and spoken about this. Mm -hmm. So they're, 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 they're running with this. And then you had this day where Kobe dies and, and everyone's affected. Yeah. Uh, social media, all the rumors, everything that was taking place. And we see these games are still playing, and you see guys just, like, breaking down. Mm -hmm. Kyrie Irving, like, just left the arena. Like, he couldn't do it. You had players, um, they were doing moments of silence in a layup line, like, tears in their eyes. And it was just, like, at some point, like, they couldn't play. Mm -hmm. Like, even Dwayne Wade the other night on TNT said, you know, he was like, Sunday, I wouldn't have been able, I couldn't get out of bed. Um, and I get, you know, it would have been a loss of money. It would have been really hard. Like, how do you pay back fans that have spent money to come out and see these players play? Just postpone for another yeah, day. Yeah, like, mm. I don't know what the answer is. I just know Sunday that wasn't it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Talk about Kobe's impact and what you've been able to, I guess, really surmise from what so many people have said uh, throughout this week that you may not have known about him prior to his passing. I think the biggest thing for me about Kobe um, and this death is is, and someone had mentioned this on one of the shows I've been watching, is that this is one of the first things you realize, like, in the NBA, most of their old-time players, like, they live forever. Like, yeah. Bill Russell was still alive. Bill Russell still like, alive. Like, football players die. Baseball players die. NBA cats, they, they still out here. Like, yeah. you know, Dr. J is still out here being yeah. smooth. Mm -hmm. The Silver Fox, he's still right. Dr. J. Um, so to see somebody at 41, especially like Kobe, mm -hmm. and it's not to say that, like, I'm a huge Laker fan or was even a Kobe fan. I've written columns criticizing things he's done and things he's said in the past. But the effect and how it happened in this so social media time that we live in, it was very reminiscent of when Michael Jackson passed, mm -hmm. when everyone was just, like, trying to figure out, is this true? Is this not? TMZ broke it. The Internet and social media apps are crashing because everyone's trying to get this information. And there's just a lot of rumors that you didn't really know. And that's what it made me think of, not so much about how it just affected basketball, but it's culture in itself yeah. and how we try to get information and what's true and what's not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. yeah. Well, with this cultural impact, and we know that the big game is coming up, mm -hmm. do you think that maybe they will pay homage or do some kind of honorarium for him or... What do, what do you think is going to happen? I definitely think so. Uh, yesterday, Roger Goodell had his, uh, you know, annual State of the Union address press conference he does, and someone asked him that. I believe we'll see something. They had something on Monday opening night um, where they had, like, a little moment of silence, had his picture up on the screen. So I wouldn't be surprised on Sunday if we see something either before the game, during the game, halftime. But I'm sure he'll be uh, intertwined yeah. in the coverage I, of the I, game. I can't imagine that it, that it wouldn't do it, yeah. Because mm -hmm. he affected, you know, all sports, mm -hmm. all, you know, not just sports. He, he, he affected all platforms. But speaking of the NFL, I mean, in the, it being in the recent news now, we're excited to see Patrick Holmes and the, you know, Kansas City Chiefs go down to the Super Bowl. Okay, we, we excited. We liked it. We like to see, we want to see it. We want to see J-Lo perform at halftime. Cool. <laughs> but... What about this controversy that just took place with Colin Kaepernick? And are we to forget all of the negativity that surrounds the NFL? And, um, you know, them, I guess it, it appears that they're trying to destroy his legacy. Or are they? What is your take on I don't that? think they're necessarily trying to destroy it. They're just trying to act like it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm someone that's been highly critical of the NFL over the years. And the main reason is that, like, the NFL's problems are usually because the NFL caused them. Mm -hmm. Like, they trip over themselves all the time. Yeah, wow. um, there's so many self-inflicted wounds. Um, you know, we're here in Atlanta. Like, the, the trial was, what, in October, November? Mm -hmm. yeah. And how all that went down. And, you know, in the NFC Championship game, we had someone, the running back for the 49ers, break his playoff record 
but yet nobody on that broadcast mentioned whose record it was that got wow. broken. Oh, wow, and that wow. never, never That's happened. That's a fool. Yeah. Wow. We're going to have more with Karen Phillips when we return. We're going to get a little bit more yeah. from this man and his magical mind. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. We are still joined by Karen Phillips from the Shadow League. Miss Quad. Yes, yes, I got a couple of questions. Mm -hmm. okay. get in so it. let's talk Jay-Z. You, you know, we saw in the media he got, I mean, highly scrutinized for partner, partnering with the NFL. I was part of that. <laughs> so wh wh why? Why are you so hard on him? What, do you think that was a bad move for him? Yeah. I, here's the thing. If it was just a business deal, because Jay-Z always talk about business and we know he likes his money, if he just came out and said, hey, yo, I'm doing this for some money, I can't turn down this opportunity, I want to be a potential owner, I would have been like, cool, do what you do. But when you try to disguise it and put makeup on it and say, I'm trying to give back and we're doing this to try to inspire change, as it would have been called. Well, if that's really what it's about, well, why didn't Kaepernick get a job? Why are some of the, 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 the groups and nonprofits that you're giving money to have been very problematic when it comes to black teams? Like one group was cutting off the uh, dreads of, of black kids in Chicago. Like mm. everything about this has just been like concerts and t-shirts. Mm. That doesn't change racism. Mm. Like that doesn't fix the problem. That just puts money in your pocket. So if that's what you want to do, you should have just told us that. But here's the deal. I mean, come on, we know Jay is a billionaire. Does he really need the money? I mean, let's really, let's, let's but that's really how think billionaires about that. become billionaires, always trying to get the money. But he's already there. But what about him? They how do, stay there. But how do we affect change if we don't get inside the infrastructure of these systems and go from the inside out? We can right. stand outside and criticize things mm -hmm. from the outside, but what if he really did try to go inside? Because I remember him performing and him always wearing Cap jerseys and him, him and Cap being close. What if they had a conversation, you know, because we're not privy to these mm -hmm. things. And what if they talked about, you know, w this is a strategy, and then it just kind of fell sour, not knowing what the NFL was going to do in response to it. Because everything that has been reported, uh, and even from both sides they mentioned in the press conference, was that there was no conversation. Jay was just doing this on his own, and that he called uh, Cap a couple of days before the press conference. And it was a very tense, uh, uncomfortable conversation for Jay. And there's been a fallout since then, is what I've been told. Mm. Wow. Yeah. What do you, That's deep. What do you think about this uh, ha halftime situation? Yeah. Do you think? Do you yeah. think that the uh, NFL got it right? You know, we're going to Miami for the big game. Your 15 this second answer. Yes. Uh, it's it's Sha cool. Shakira J -Lo, and J -Lo. You know, Latin culture, I get it, but we mm. couldn't get no Rick Ross, no Trina, no City Girls, no nothing. Yeah. It is. Miami. <laughs> <laughs> it Trina. is. She said City Girls. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you so much. Please uh, make sure you head over to theshadowweek.com to get into this man's writing and so much more. Remember, the conversation always continues at Sister Circle TV on all social media platforms. Give it up for Karan. Yay. Karan Phillips. <laughs> so that's Great. Awesome.